Hello and welcome back to Week 9 Hero. As always, I'm your GM, Evan, and I'm here to conclude with the final part of our Road to Character Creation series. We're going to be talking about saves, attacks, and defenses. So now that you finally put your character together, we can take a realistic look at what they can do and how good they are at what they can do. And we can compare it to what the appropriate level of attacks, defenses, and saves should be to determine how skilled they are and what areas we can spend your last few power points on to shore them up. So firstly, what are saves? Now saves, to my knowledge, come from D&D and they refer to your character's ability to resist external effects, attacks, damage, and things like that. So they're broken up into three categories. These categories determine how good they are at defending against or resisting certain effects and abilities. And for a particular character you might make, they might favor one save over the others. Now saves aren't an end-all be-all. The way that we're looking at it is saves are a cushion. So the more you invest in these saves, the wider the cushion is against repeated attacks. So the first and probably most important one is going to be toughness. Now toughness refers to your physical endurance and it's your resistance against physical damage. So anything that could draw blood is something that might go from a toughness save. Any targeting your toughness save, they're working directly against your ability to not be hurt or wounded. And as you'll notice from our handy little table below, as I'm sure you've seen from the other videos, the category of your toughness save generally determines your level of physical endurance. Now your character might be something like a Batman or a Robin, so they are quite good at handling physical blows. However, there is a hard limit to that. They can be hit by gunfire and it's still going to do serious damage to them. That places them firmly in a certain category, this time being something like the enhanced category. Now this can all be mitigated by things like defensive role and certain items and equipment, but typically that would be their toughness save foregoing any sort of special circumstances or modifiers. Next one doesn't get a ton of play, but this is going to be our fortitude save, or as I call it, the middle child of the saves. Now, fortitude refers to any sort of external stimuli or external factor that affects your body's biological functions. So this is something like sicknesses, poisons, diseases. It can also be something like extreme heat, the vacuum of space, anything like that. Anything that makes your body stop working efficiently should be covered by the fortitude save. And because the fortitude save is inherently different from the toughness save, you can have a character that's a street level hero. They're otherwise completely normal or human. They can have a high toughness save. They can be wearing body armor. They can do anything they can to raise their toughness score. However, they can still be infected by a super virus and it can take them out. That reflects sort of the difference between toughness and fortitude. So just because your character is incredibly tough doesn't necessarily mean they have an immunity to starving or suffocating. That's the biggest difference between fortitude and toughness. Finally, we come to the will save. So the will save refers to anything that's sort of immaterial. If you can't, if it's not a physical presence in our universe, it can fall under the will save. So it can be something like magic, psychic attacks, um, all of those things fall under the will save category. Now the next half of this video is discussing attacks and defenses, which are very easy to understand. Defenses are your ability to completely avoid attacks. Now saves are what you roll when you are enduring or taking the damage, but it's assuming you're taking that damage. If you were to have a high active defense, which is something like a dodge or parry, you might be able to avoid the attack entirely and many characters like speedsters or martial artists might forego a high toughness in order to have high active defenses because you might not get hit at all. There are also rare opportunities where you might have to roll an active defense, dodge or parry, as if it were a save and those applies to situations that require agility. If your opponent is able to turn into goo and they coat the floor in a sticky goo, your character's mobility and agility might be the thing that stops you from getting 
caught in their trap. That is a time where you might roll a dodge save or a parry save. But as noted on the tables below, dodge refers to your ability to dodge ranged attacks, gunfire, anything that is not physically in somebody's hand when they attack you. It's going to be dodge save. Parry is the opposite of that. It is going to be anything that a person is holding in their hand to attack you with. So swords, punches, picking up a piece of concrete and trying to smash you with it. Things like that. Finally, attack bonus is sometimes also referred to accuracy. It refers to how accurate your attacks are. And as we note on the table below, the higher your accuracy um, bonus, the more likely your attacks are able to hit. So a good and powerful attack is all great. But if you can't land the hit, then you're really not knocking them out, are you? Traditionally, at lower levels, it might be more beneficial to have more accurate attacks rather than having high damage boosts because generally the game will skew towards damage bonuses. The way they're set up will almost always trump saves of a same level. Ergo, you have a little bit of leeway where having very accurate attacks allows you to land those blows and then you can compensate for the amount of damage you're doing by having a lowered damage effect. But that's something we can get into a little further in more of a combat or advanced combat video. But what we're looking with, with all of these, is to take a look at these tables and determine how important these things are for your character. It's been the cornerstone of this entire series is to take a look at these benchmarks and determine if they suit the type of character that you want to play. And with saves, defenses, and attacks, you're getting down to the real essential maneuvers and actions of the game. Without good accuracy, you can't hit anybody. And without strong saves, you can't take any damage. So I think these are always the most important finishing touch to look at as you end your character creation to really decide how skilled your character is and potentially if you need to go back to the drawing board with it. But that wraps it up for this video and the character creation series. From here I'm going to be going into further videos describing the less important aspects of character creation and also the very very important aspects of game design things like combat things like structuring campaigns and structuring encounters so as always thank you for the comments kind words thank you for subscribing liking and commenting it really really helps out and also thank you for checking out the side projects like the podcast and the drive-thru rpg store thank you so much for listening and see you soon